Good morning. Um, Sushan has already introduced everything that I wanted to say. Um, and so what I'm going to try to do is I'll start this by just getting a show of hands from everybody in the room. Because when I saw the list of attendees, I know a lot of you come from the innovation team. Some of you are in the business. And most of you understand payment. Um, so I just want to get a sense. Does everybody, uh, maybe I'll just ask this, has anyone not heard of Santoshi Nakamoto? Anyone in this room? Wow, not surprising. So I would assume that all of you are multimillionaires. Right? By definition, if you know who he is, then you would mean that you would have invested in Bitcoin. And uh, where Bitcoin is today and 18 months or even 24 months ago when I looked at it, I can safely conclude that we are among the midst of millionaires. But joking aside, I think you know, a lot of the protocol that you see on the back of what is blockchain really comes out from the white paper uh, done by uh, uh, Nakamoto-san, which is still a, uh, whether is he real, is he not, nobody knows. Right? Unless somebody says, I met him, uh, that would be incredible. So what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to just level set very quickly on what is blockchain and then give you a perspective in terms of how we see the technology and the way we would apply. And then we get into a specific use case around payments and our view around why uh, the world of payment will now be transformed. And I know that we're in the midst, uh, you know, we have uh, Sapnandu here from MAS and I'm going to be politically incorrect to say that we'll show you how what is commonly known as fiat currency is actually a flat currency and not an intelligent currency. So that's something that I'll go through, and then we can uh, obviously talk more at the panel. So this is just to level set what is a blockchain, which I'm sure all of you know. But I think one of the things that is really important, uh, as what Sushan said, uh, it is immutable. And if you look at the way blockchain gets settled, and why is it so sexy, and why is it so interesting, is because each time when a transaction gets created, it requests for a validation by a node. So everybody who's in the network gets the opportunity to validate it, make sure that they know that the transaction is real, it is correct, and then it just gets locked in for it to be recorded, and everyone on the chain gets to see it. And that's a huge difference compared to what we all traditionally know, that when a transaction is being done, the data is kept centrally with the bank that does the processing, and not everybody gets to see everything. And I think that's really important because that transparency that ability to track, that ability to see, that ability to know that so long as it is locked in there, all of us see it, you know it cannot be removed because all of you have seen it. And that's the beauty of blockchain. That's essentially how this technology can be imagined in many, many different ways. And when we look at the blockchain for financial services, we did a quick check and we looked right across multiple industries and asked the question, where are blockchains being applied. And financial services, no surprise, is right at the top. Not your logistics industry, not your manufacturing industries, but it's really the financial industries. And it's predicated of three broad concepts that uh, makes it so powerful. Obviously, you know what a token is. And we explain how token can mean different things in different setup. There is a wallet to hold the token. And I think more importantly, the whole blockchain um, that gets uh, powered by the whole idea of a smart contract that is on top of a blockchain that gets recorded. So if you look at it, the way we think about blockchain and the way we think about its application, it's around the four proofs, as what Shushan said. And I'll say the first proof or proof of value is something that all of you are very familiar with. Um, again, I do not know how many of you actually know this, but in the world of Bitcoin and the guys who trade it, they say Bitcoin is actually a proof of value. The value of the amount of electricity that goes into mining that particular coin. And that's the reason why Bitcoin has a value. And that's what all the cryptocurrency traders talk about when they think about Bitcoin. And so it is a proof of value that reflects the underlying asset. And we extend that out by saying we could tokenize everything that we can see in this physical world versus and as well as the virtual world as you've seen in the case of NFTs. The second area and foundation that we look at in how we apply blockchain is the proof of transaction. This is a proof that a transaction uh, has taken place. And the record that gets created is immutable. 
No one can change it. It is locked in and you can see it and, uh, and it stays there forever. And I think that's the beauty of it. And you can see different platforms, largely in a trade area, that will take advantage of that. The next one is the proof of identity. And I think in here, you know, Pradi from Temasek will be very happy that I'm calling out Affinity, which is a great idea that came out and says, can we prove the, can we use blockchain to prove identity? And uh, an identity here could well be that the identity of a person, and in the case of Affinity, they looked at the identity of individuals and say, are their qualifications valid? And, and that has a lot of value in today's world, in being able to do that. And in the application that we have, where we have also partnered with uh, Temasek, SGX, and as well as uh, Stanchart, where we have launched the Climate Impact Exchange. And blockchain is used to allow us to say that the carbon credits get created are actually of high quality. And what do we mean by high quality? That means that we're using blockchain to trace all the way back to where that particular tree is growing, in which forest, and the value uh, in, in knowing that that in itself is from a sustainable source, it's a real source, and then that gets put into the uh, exchange for the purpose of saying, now this credit that you are buying is of high quality because you can trace it all the way. And that is through the power of blockchain. And last but not least is about the power of obligation. An obligation here would really be how do you use token? And uh, I think a lot of you would also be studying a lot into the world of DeFi. Is where, but how do you use token to be able to allow you to know that I have put up a token as an obligation where it will be taken when certain rules and, and, uh, and conditionality have been agreed upon, applied, and has taken place. And in there, you would see you know, the bill of exchange, the IOU, and how the infrastructure or party or can actually enable this, where the whole disruption on wholesale payment uh, can occur on the back of these concepts. So a lot of the initiatives that we have in the bank is really a combination of these four proofs that we believe that blockchain would deliver, powered by, obviously, tokenization, the wallets that we can create, and using smart contract to enable a lot of these proofs to take place. The next page, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. All of you know this is the pain that we're all living through today, whereby you know that fiat currency or flat currency or not so smart currency is nothing more than just a digit in a computer system. It takes place, but you have no control over how that transaction happens. And uh, there is no ability to program it. And, uh, and there is a lot of work afterwards in the area of sanctions and AML, which all of you know, and huge cost goes behind that. The second thing is there's this whole idea of saying there is uncertainty. I don't know when the money is arriving uh, because of the way the network has been created. And last but not least, in the world whereby we expect everything to be 24-7, 365, payments is pretty much operating within a certain set of hours. And so this is the pain that we all see. We can't make things happen if the clearing houses are closed. Right? So that is something that uh, we know as the pain today. And so when we look at you know, bringing intelligence into payment, we are solving for these pain points. And we have the opportunity to partner with uh, uh, JP Morgan and Tomasic to essentially create an open platform that allows us to leverage the idea of saying, why don't all of us come in, use the power of blockchain, use the power of smart contract, and enable us to be able to design a payment system, a payment rail that enables payment to happen based on how you want it to happen, based on the conditions that you want it to be, and that when the settlement happens, it is final and there is no dispute behind it. There is no need for further processing and check on the back of it. So when we imagine what could come out of this infrastructure, it could very well change the way we settle for FX, the way we settle for securities, and as well as the way we do trade finance. The world of you know, letters of credit that we all know it as today will go away. I would even put a bet on the table and say, ideas that say we will try to use blockchain, uh, we will try to change uh, how LC is being done by making it look like LC while using blockchain is not necessarily going to work because you've got to reimagine and use the power of smart contract, not necessarily how you want to make 
LC into a smart contract. And I think that is a big difference. So this is something that we are very excited about. It is something that we can co-create with industry. And uh, this is an area where we sincerely believe because of the fact that you can make money programmable, it will enable us to really imagine and reimagine finance in more than one way. So the next page is what I'm going to just cover on how, how does this all really happen? And the power behind this is really the whole idea of what we call a payment orchestration um, when, when it occurs. In a blockchain, I'll go back to what a smart contract is. So smart contract is nothing more than just a computer program that essentially says, these are the conditions that I want in my payment. And when these conditions are met, settlement will happen immediately. So in a world of payment that we have today, we have the remittance bank, we have the corresponding bank, we have the receiving bank. And we will all know that all of the three parties, if not more, will be doing a lot of KYC, a lot of uh, sanction checking, a lot of uh, AML checking. And many of these checks happen post-transaction. So in a world of uh, uh, intelligent payment, all these conditionality will be built inside the smart contract, where the conditions, the concerns that each of the bank have will put in there, and they would want each party to essentially verify and confirm that indeed these conditions are met and put in an indication on the back of it, and as well as to fund the transaction. Once these are met and everybody confirms, atomic settlement happens, and then payment is final. Imagine on the back of that what you could do on the smart contract. So this is just a normal cross-border payment. But if you think about how you can apply for FX today, how you can make sure that FX could happen the moment your swap transaction happens, it settles. Amazing. And that is something that we can imagine what that world will be. Imagine when a transaction has happened, and I think it is real today. It already happened in uh, uh, some of the, the, the um, crypto exchanges whereby when a transaction happens, settlement happens on the back of USDC or TC. And I think that is something that um, in the world that we're operating in, that all of us are familiar with, we are catching up with what that world has become. And we feel that the path that we're on with this infrastructure we immediately get us into that space and even more. So that is something that I just want to use as a basis of, for you to understand and also as a basis for you to imagine on the use cases that you can create on the back of this. And so finally, you know, we believe that with this capability, the way you reimagine payments through blockchain, where we're able to use proof of value, proof of obligation, and proof of transaction and identity, we would be able to now change the whole payment landscape into a 24-7, into one that, where you know payment happens because it is based on your terms. And at the same time, you know that when settlement happens, it is final. So this is just a quick uh, um, introduction to how we bring intelligence into payment and, uh, and how we help um, what is a fiat or flat currency into an intelligent one that enables us to make payment, and as well as finance in a very different way. So that's all I have this morning, and I think that should set up a very nice conversation at the panel where I know you're going to go into DeFi, and that's an exciting space. So thank you very much.